book, I have not read the book. I saw a, a table from the book. The book, as I recall, was uh, named Chemical Oceanography. And uh, it was referenced in a very good book by Ron Weissong, a veterinarian, interestingly, uh, called The Creation Evolution Controversy. Weissong published the book about 35 years ago. And it was almost like a, a, an, an encyclopedia of, of creation evolution questions. It was, it's still a very valuable resource. But as I recall, uh, he had a list of um, uh, tins of heavy metals. And of course, the heavy metals cannot evaporate from the ocean. Water can evaporate from the ocean. The heavy metals, they're going to they're be in the water, they're going to be in the sediments at the, at the bottom of the ocean. Uh, but, but they have no place else to go. They're either in the water or they're in the sediments at, 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 the, at the bottom of the ocean. And look at those concentrations. Uh, as I recall, these are rough numbers. Uh, approximately, it might have been uh, uh, 80% of the heavy metals that were uh, referenced in the tables in the other book, chemical oceanography, uh, would indicate with the currently known transport rates of the heavy metals from rivers into the world's oceans, uh, about 80% would indicate uh, an inflow time of less than 100,000 years. Hmm. So it's not just the mud deposits, it's what happens to the heavy metals. Um, there are a lot of things like that. Yeah. So I, I hope I didn't, that, hope that's not No, that's trail. great. Yeah. That, no, it's great because the other points that they make are there's not enough sodium in the sea for millions of years. The, the maximum age, the most maximum age they can get is 62 million years. Not, not as good as the 100,000 as, as 100, we have there. Now here's one that's a lot better even than that. The Earth's magnetic field is decaying too fast. At the rate the field that they see now, they don't think that, that it could have been there more than 10,000 years. And they have evidence for that and they're willing to debate that kind of stuff. And the interesting thing about debates is evolutionary scientists no longer really want to debate in, a, in an atmosphere with a large audience because the creationist scientists make more sense to the average layman. Uh, and there's something there, you know. Um, when they discuss these things head on, the evolutionary scientists and the creationist scientists, at the end of the debate, when they take a survey afterwards, always people say, hey, we think the creationist debater won the debate. And so they, they're, they're not too thrilled about debating generally. You, you, that made you uncomfortable, me saying that? No, no, not at all. Oh, okay, uh, but, so you kind but, of but, shift there. Well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my wife kicks me when I put, put in too much, body, too much language. body language. Yeah. Um, you mentioned the Earth's magnetic field. Uh, I guess uh, with the measurements that have been made, it seems that it's decaying, if it has something like a half-life of around 1,500 years. And with that, it, it's well, pretty... Well, six percent for every 150 years right now. That would now. be about that. And, uh, and see, the, the thing is, that's kind of difficult to measure from one year to the next because you need a longer period of time. But uh, fairly reasonable measurements of the Earth's magnetic field were made uh, more than 100 years ago. We have several more points on that now. And, and so that rate of decay currently, or at least within the last uh, uh, century, um, it's pretty clear that it's decaying at a, about that kind of rate you said, whether it's 6% of that equates to a half-life of 1,500 years. Um, some people who would not accept the, uh, the creation idea would try to have other explanations for that, which don't make any sense to me. But <laughs> it does relate to the rate project because it has something to do with the, uh, with the carbon-14 because uh, carbon-14 is created in the upper atmosphere uh, from cosmic radiation striking nitrogen in the upper atmosphere in the atmos and, and, the car and the nitrogen-14 is, is, is converted to carbon-14. But um, if you have a stronger uh, Earth's magnetic field, then a lot of that radiation would have been deflected, so you would be generating less carbon-14. So by the time you ingest it, what, what, what you maybe you have discussed or will discuss the carbon-14 in diamonds and coal, and you look at those things and they say, well, it says 50,000 years. They, you say, well, the, the Bible still looks like it's 6,000 years, 50,000. Uh, why would it be 50,000? Well, uh, if in fact then the cosmic radiation was being deflected uh, more due to a stronger Earth's magnetic field, 
you would get less uh, 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 carbon-14 being generated as a, f as a percentage of the carbon-12 in most things. Uh, and so uh, what you would see is 50,000 years with the current uh, ratio of carbon-14 to carbon-12, that 50,000, hmm. if the magnetic field is blocking the creation of more of the um, radioactive carbon-14, then that 50,000, if you make that adjustment, it's going to make it much lower. Hmm. So it would put it much more reasonably into the time frame that you might find with a literal with a literal reading of the Bible. So I, 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 sorry, I, I no, that's go great. Too far with no, 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 field, that is great. A lot of these things are they kind of fit together, and you have to kind of put the whole picture together. That, that that's so, that's great. But I still can't help you with the radio halos very much. I'm Here, sorry. Here's <laughs> another one he mentions, which narrows it down to thousands of years. He okay. says many strata are too tightly bent. In many mountainous areas, strata thousands of feet thick are bent and folded into hairpin shapes. Oh yeah. The conventional geological time scale says these formations were deeply buried and solidified for hundreds of millions of years. Oh. before they were bent. Now, yet the folding occurred without cracking, with radii so small that the entire formation had to be still wet and unsolidified when the bending occurred. This implies that the folding occurred less than thousands of years after deposition. I wish I had known you were going to mention that. Okay. Um, when was it? Um, almost 20 years ago, 1992. I went down the Yangtze River in China with two cameras, one with slides and one with uh, print film, because uh, I knew at that time the Chinese government was planning to uh, build the Three Gorge Dam, which would be the largest uh, dam, largest amount of water, largest generators in, in the world, and, and so on and so forth. So I was taking pictures of things that will never be seen again. And getting downstream just about to the place, just upstream from where that dam is now constructed, uh, you can see the layers just uh, maybe uh, several meters above the water level at that time with hairpin turns, no obvious cracks, and it would look like a, a, just a, a U-shape. It was just uh, a, a amazing. And uh, I have those pictures. I wish I, I, I could have brought them. I didn't know you were going to talk about this today. But so that's just one example that I have seen, and maybe you have reference in here about many other places in the world you can find those kinds of, uh, of, of formations that if it occurred uh, before total consolidation, if, if it occurs after consolidation and hardening, it would be, it would be cracked. It would have to be cracked. Uh, instead of, um, it's the difference between what it looks like if you mold clay when it's wet, which is called uh, constructive pottery, or trying to mold it when it's totally dry, <laughs> which is called what your kids do when they break mom's Pottery. Ceramic dishes, yeah, 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 you know, yeah, yeah. That's the difference, yeah. <laughs> yeah and, and so when, when people see the, a debate on these things, things like that are so obvious that the evolutionary geological scientists, secular scientists, are saying, no, this stuff took millions of years of dirt and dust to, to build up, and you get X million of years here, and then you get another strata, X millions of years there, and then another one. No way, because the stuff bends and twists and turns, and it would crack if it had solidified, and it would have solidified over hundreds of millions of years and millions of years. And so that indicates thousands of years as well. So these things fit into the Bible being accurate, again, about what it speaks. But let's go to Jesus, our favorite subject on this. We've got maybe no time left. Uh -oh. um, about a minute and a half or something like that, uh, the evidence, again, is, is, is so clearly overwhelming to Jesus being who he is. And we, we've run out of time. Just go to our website, truthseekers.ws. It was up there on the screen. And we can link you to places like Answers in Genesis and ICR, Institute for Creation Research, and many other places with lots of Wise people answering lots of questions for those who are true seekers of truth. And God says, you're not going to find me, really, unless you search for me with all your heart. Sincerely want it. And so many people don't, Jesus said, because they don't want to appear different to 